Coming up, Jonathan explores a Florida cave in search of a rare cave crayfish. Welcome to Jonathan Bird's Blue World. I'm here on the beautiful Suwannee River in Branford, Florida. We rented a house here for a week of cave diving here in cave country. Tomorrow, we're going out with our good buddy, Wayne Kennard from Amigos Dive Center. And we don't really want to embarrass ourselves because none of us have been diving caves in about a year. I haven't been in side mount gear since last February. So um, we thought maybe today we do like a refresher dive, go do a nice cave and, and get up to speed and get comfortable with our gear again. So I called up my friend, Becky Kagan Schott, who is an expert on Florida caves. And she suggested that we go to Little River, which is a really beautiful, but a high flow cave. There's a lot of water coming out of it. So that would make it a bit of a challenge and it'll give us a good excuse to work on our skills. So that's the plan for today. We're going to Little River and we're going to check it out. Our first stop is Amigos Dive Shop where my good friend Wayne Kennard has our tanks full and ready. We're on an expedition today looking for a blind cave crayfish, which is a little albino crayfish that lives in the caves. It's very rare, but the cool thing is it lives to be 200 years old. It's only a half hour drive from the shop to Little River Springs. This picture perfect spring produces 55 million gallons of crystal clear water every day. And it's home to the elusive cave crayfish. This is my favorite part of, of diving, is when you get to carry your stuff. <laughs> we bring our tanks down to the water. Then, it's time to suit up for an adventure. Now, how does this thing go together? Finally, Todd, Zach, and I are ready to begin our dive. because I've never dove this cave before. But Zach and Todd have done it many times. At the entrance to the cave, Todd ties his reel to a steel pin specifically designed for cave divers. This line is extremely important for cave divers as it points the way out of the cave. A few hundred feet inside the cave, Todd ties his line off to the permanent guideline that we will follow. Soon we leave the cavern zone and head into a place of perpetual darkness. Since Zach is an expert on this cave, he leads the way. The walls of the cave show scratches from divers struggling forward in the high flow conditions. We're lucky that the flow is not too strong today. While Florida caves are not ornately decorated like caves in some other places, the erosion of the limestone creates an alien landscape full of interconnecting passages to explore. You never know what's around the next corner. We're having 
having fun filming each other as we swim further into the cave, keeping an eye out for the crayfish. Finally, Todd spots a blind cave crayfish. It looks like a miniature lobster, but since it lives its whole life in darkness, this crayfish has lost not only its sight, but its pigment. So it's a ghostly color. Mission accomplished. With the crayfish filmed and having reached one third of our air supply, we turn and begin our trip back to the entrance. The way back is much easier because we just go with the flow. Back in the cavern zone, Todd removes his reel from the permanent line and spools it back up as we ascend. In the spring, we spend a little time filming the sunfish. Then I spot a really cool freshwater flounder, also known locally as a hog choker. Even in a tiny pool like this, there are cool things to find. We surfaced safely an hour after we started. That was awesome! Now that we've had a refresher dive, we're ready for our special expedition with Wayne Kennard tomorrow at Peacock Springs. Stay tuned for the next cave diving adventure. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our latest episode all the way to the end. You're crazy if you don't subscribe. Hit that subscribe button now so you won't miss our next episode. And check out our merch link in the description for some Blue World swag.